So this is from the movie. So what I was doing here was creating these quite artistic images for them, and at the same time doing some real product stuff. So on the movie I had rain, smoke, and this slow motion camera. So you can really see the rain coming down really slowly and the smoke and I kind of got them running and running machines and dancing and you just see this it comes comes quite poetic. And because I had this one light source, I could just switch. Again, it was all digital. So you have the monitor there. I shoot between film and digital, I move it around. Uh, and I'll talk about formats in a minute. So I'd have the I'd have the screen and I'd get the digital camera out, you know, shoot the, the, uh, just, you know, get the, get the model posed, and then, you know, look at the screen and go, hey, okay, we've, we've got that shot, right, let's do that out, so I had six outfits, because I had to have six, six to eight different outfits for the campaign, so I'd shoot the outfit on stills, and then I'd do, take the movie camera and do a moment of the movie of that. And then we change outfits and I do that again. But the, the feel of the difference between the movement and the still is quite a different headset. But because I was slowing the film down, I made it really slow, that it felt like a moving still, that concept could work. So it, it's about kind of creating the situation that works for each situation. So for instance, uh, you know, I would go from digital to to uh, two and a quarter, large <coughs> format, or sometimes I even use a little point and shoot camera that you can buy at a chemist. And you know, I've turned up at that shoot with, with people, and they're going, "What the fuck is this guy all about?" And at the same time, I do that, so I do a really big, large format, juicy, you know, high res beautifully the image and then I take them into a corner and go pa, 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 you know. and then you take that that film and then be very grainy and very rough and if you put that rough image next to a high fashion image there's no one can say oh he's making a mistake you're making an artistic choice did you take that straight and then turn it? <laughs> no it's basically his head down and the rain's coming at him yeah, but you know, yeah, you could, you know, you turn it upside down any time you move it. I mean, just I would say be completely free with an image. You know, shoot it upside down and turn it up that way. Uh, shoot a big wide shot and take a tiny bit and blow it up. There are absolutely no rules for how you create imagery at all, in my opinion. Use anything. You know, you use a 10-8 Polaroid. Use a point and shoot from the use a 35mm digital, use large format. Sometimes uh, you can use SX70, you know, like this guy, guy Jürgen Teller, did a whole campaign for Marc Jacobs on SX70 Polaroids because they give you this really beautiful, soft, fuzzy feel that you can't get on digital. So it's experiment with anything you like and find what aesthetically works for you. And go, oh, I really like this, you know. And there are some guys that will only use a point and shoot camera because they want the spontaneity. Or ch -ch 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 -ch. They don't want to spend hours setting up and it's like it's too painful. You lose a connection with the model. And you don't, you know, and now that the rules are so open that, you know, with people like Jürgen Teller using these point and shoot cameras, you can do whatever you like as long as you're creating an aesthetic image that, that relates to people on any, on any way, you know. So that, that, that's encouraging. I mean, in this film, <laughs> suddenly there's a horse. <laughs> but in this film, you know, I had what I chose to do was because I didn't want to do fashion, fashion, fashion. I chose to have, it was about the turning of the season. So I had rain and kind of smoke. It was a winter collection. So what I had within this was I had uh, a hawk. A dope black Doberman, a black horse. I had these very majestic creatures that I would cut to. So in a way, by association, you would, you know, you'd kind of have the girl kind of moving like in slow motion, the rain, the wind, and you'd cut to the horse moving. And just literally by cutting to something else or by a juxtaposition of image, you creating a point of view. 
So by having these animals and by having this aesthetic of these kind of majestic creatures, you know, you kind of elevate the status of what you're doing there and you kind of have an association. And it's very emotive for people to see a beautiful horse moving in slow motion, you know. And, uh, and then you see the woman moving and you kind of get the kind of contours of the body and it just, 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 just by association of image. So it really is context of what, what you put an image next to. You know, if you put a beautiful flower next to, you know, you put kind of a flower coming out of a, a concrete, you know, next to a kid standing in the concrete with a bleeding face, you know, what you immediately say there is, you know, you, you create something in people's mind, oh, why is, oh yeah, the flower's struggling in the, the, the kind of the concrete world, and this, so is this kid. You know. So my association was majestic, beautiful, powerful, uh, streamlined, you know, kind of, these are the kind of things that I, I, I felt, and there's the passion, you know, essentially. Uh, and what I chose to do is, because it's a movie, I chose to kind of do these behind scenes, kind of quite artistic interpretations of the movie set. So when you look at it on my site and the film, you kind of get, you get a kind of uh, juxtaposition really. And that's what I chose to do on my site. And, you know, the kind of movement in that, you know, you're not, you know, the product's not looking that uh, tight, if you like, it's very, very creasy. But there's an energy in the photograph, which when you sit it next to, and the same with this one, uh, and the same with these, these are all from the, so when you sit it next to something like that, which is much more controlled, what it's allowing is that, it's allowing kind of movement around this quite controlled advertising image. So that's how I tend to go into something. You know, if I've got a specific job that has to be very well lit, it's got to be lit, and you know everything. Right, you know, you can play by using other images to create a story. Is the is really the way to that, and that one just goes a little bit too far. But you can't see anything. Uh, so that's what that is. That's the Reese campaign.